Hyper Real and Imaginary, From Simulacra and Simulations by Jean Baudrillard. Disneyland is a perfect model of all the entangled orders of simulation. To begin with it is a play of illusions and phantasms, pirates, the frontier, future world, etc. But what draws the crowds is undoubtedly much more the social microcosm, the miniaturized and religious reveling in real America, and its delights and drawbacks. You park outside, queue up inside, and are totally abandoned at the exit. In this imaginary world, the only phantom asgoria is in the inherent warmth and the affection of the crowd, and in that sufficiently excessive number of gadgets used there to specifically maintain the multitudinous effect. The contrast with the absolute solitude of the parking lot, a veritable concentration camp, is total. Or rather, inside, a whole range of gadgets magnetize the crowd into direct flows. Outside, solitude is directed onto a single gadget, the automobile. By an extraordinary coincidence, one that undoubtedly belongs to the peculiar enchantment of this universe, this deep-frozen infantile world happens to have been conceived and realized by a man who is himself now cryogenicized, Walt Disney, who awaits his resurrection at minus 180 degrees centigrade. The objective profile of the United States, then, may be traced throughout Disneyland, even down to the morphology of individuals and the crowd. All of its values are exalted here, in miniature and comic strip form, embalmed and pacified. Hence the possibility of an ideological analysis of Disneyland. L. Martin does it well. Digest the American way of life, panegyric to American values. Idealized transposition of contradictory reality, to be sure. But this conceals something else, and that ideological blanket exactly serves to cover over a third order simulation. Disneyland is there to conceal the fact that it is the real country, all of real America, which is Disneyland. Just as prisons are there to conceal the fact that it is the social in its entirety, and its banal omnipresence, which is carceral. Disneyland is presented as imaginary in order to make us believe that the rest is real, when in fact all of Los Angeles and the America surrounding it are no longer real, but of the order of the hyper-real and of simulation. It is no longer of question of false representation of reality, ideology, but of concealing the fact that the real is no longer real, and thus saving the reality principle. The Disneyland imaginary is neither true nor false. It is a deterrence machine set up in order to rejuvenate and reverse the fiction of the real. Hence the debility, the infantile degeneration of this imaginary. It is meant to be an infantile world in order to make us believe that the adults are elsewhere, in the real world and to conceal the fact that the real childishness is everywhere, particularly among those adults who go there to act the child in order to foster illusions of their real childishness. Moreover, Disneyland is not the only one. Enchanted Village, Magic Mountain, Marine World. Los Angeles is encircled by these imaginary stations, which feed reality, reality energy, to a town whose mystery is precisely that it is nothing more than a network of endless, unreal circulation, a town of fabulous proportions, but without space or dimensions. As much as electrical and nuclear power stations, as much as film studios, this town, which is nothing more than an immense script and a perpetual motion picture, needs this old imaginary made up of childhood signals and fake phantasms for its sympathetic nervous system.